Hey, today's video is going to deal with most Mercedes rear-wheel drive cars, um, blah, 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 tons and tons of them, um, depending on the specs. Um, the, the specs are all going to be different for wheel bearing looseness. And what I'm doing is just measuring run out uh, of wheel bearing looseness and wheel bearing tightness. Um, you can do this by hand. I've done it by hand for years and years and years. Sometimes I use a dial gauge, sometimes I don't. Usually I don't. Usually you can get it pretty dead on. Um, without a dial gauge. So I've set this dial gauge up. Um, uh, you've got one screw retainer here inside the hub, uh, the, the disc brake hub. You can leave the caliper on for this. It's not going to make much difference because the amount of movement is so minuscule and this is not, the caliper is not going to restrict it. Uh, leave the hub retaining bolt in the little screw that retains the, uh, the brake disc on to the hub and then put another wheel nut in the other side. Don't don't torque it down with a torque wrench, just tighten it snugly by hand the same way you would the nut on the other side, and that's just to keep disc wobble off of the, um, uh, the hub from, uh, between the hub and rotor from affecting the measurement. Um, so anyway, I've, this is, uh, my gauge actually is in thousandth of an inch. It's an older gauge, it's in thous thousandths of an inch. Um, but I've converted that to, um, millimeters which is supposed to be between 0 0.01 and 0 0.02 millimeters of movement of the disc in and out <clears throat> excuse me still got a bit of a cold which is only the very first notch here that's a thousandth of an inch in either direction so I've got it set up um, the base is locked onto the uh, it's magnetic it's locked onto the hub and the measuring pin <clears throat> is on the center of the spindle so that's going to measure movement in and out so I've loosened the nut here. It moved around a little bit on me, so I don't know what the, the measurement is now when I loosened it. I've loosened it, left it there, and we're going to just pull on the disc on both sides at the same time. Pull in and push out, uh, push in, pull out, and measure and see where this is going to move. And remember, this is only supposed to move one notch. I've got to center this exactly at zero if I can. Okay, now I'm going to pull, it's about half of one thou, which is good, and push, which is a little less. We've got actually a little less movement than we want, the tiniest bit less than we want. So I'm going to slightly loosen the bearing retainer, like a millimeter. <laughs> it's, it's very minute. And pull again. And again, I want to get to about half of a thousandth of an inch of play. And that is about what I want. Now I'll show you enough, just loosening this another little bit. I'm going to loosen it up like an eighth of a turn and show you the difference that makes. So that's what, one, two, three, almost four times more run out than the factory allows. So again, I'm going to adjust it in. Make sure starting point is centered. <clears throat> Excuse my throat again. Um, as you uh, loosen, and you can get one of these gauges at Princess Auto, Harbor Freight, Halford Tools, I don't know, places in other countries, they're like 50, 60, this is a more expensive one, this is a, uh, a machinist one, so this is, uh, but you can get a, a cheap setup that works perfectly for like 50, 60 bucks. Um, anyway, I've just adjusted it back in, and look at that, gone too far, that's what a difference it can make. And again, you can get used to doing these by hand. But um, really, if you haven't done it by hand before, if you're not used to doing them, this is probably the best and safest way to get it proper. Even that's a little tiny bit too much.
there we go, we want between half and three quarters of a mil, or of a thousand, thousandth of an inch of run out, and that's what we've got right now, and time to hopefully tighten without moving it at all. And once I tighten, I'm just going to tighten the pinch bolt. I'm just going to measure once again. I, I didn't show removing the wheel, removing the dust cap. Any of that stuff um, has been covered in other videos. This is merely to show how to adjust the bearing as the factory would do it. I don't know that most garages are actually going to do it this way. <laughs> I really don't think. I think most of them are going to end up doing it by hand, as I usually do. But if you haven't got a ton of practice with it, this is your safest bet. And spinning the hub, or the rotor, is going to give you a little bit of movement on your dial gauge, so try and keep it in the same spot. And there. Oops. There we go. And thanks for watching. Hopefully that wasn't too boring for you. Okay, in case you couldn't see, I was, like I said, the camera like a foot and a half away. You may not be able to see these numbers are so small. Um, I'm going to show you what it, the runout looks like close up. Every line is a thousandth of an inch. And, oops, I'm trying to do this with one hand and hold the camera steady with another. And that's, ugh, essentially the movement. Half of a thousandth which is it's actually a little less reading on there because I'm only pulling with one hand and pulling on one side but pulling with both hands on both sides will give me about the reading I need anyway thanks for watching